Okay, so we're going to start part two of our unit here on chemical reactions. In part one, we learned about what a chemical reaction is. Just We sometimes refer to it as a chemical change. It happens all around in the world, every day, all the time, in your very body. There are chemical reactions happening within your cells all the time. Okay, And we also learned how to represent them using what's called a chemical equation. So we saw that we can show that the reactants that we begin with before the reaction are changed into products after the reaction. And they'll look entirely different. For example, let's just use the example of if you toast a piece of bread in a toaster. What do you have? When you're all done, you have something that's, well, let's say you burn it. In an extreme case, what you have is this black powdery stuff that really is mostly carbon and not very tasty, I might add. But you agree that that's totally different than the bread, the nice white bread or whatever that you started with. But the atoms themselves are still there. And that's what we want to get into in this part of the unit. It's what we refer to scientifically as the conservation of mass. So why don't you write down that phrase and then we'll pause for a second and I'll start describing just what exactly that means about a chemical reaction. Remember, you can pause anytime you need to if you need to get caught up in your writing. Okay, so I'll describe what conservation of mass means here in a chemical reaction. So during any chemical reaction, The atoms of the reactants are, and here's a key word, rearranged to form the products. Okay, kind of talked about that when I did the two reactions uh, last time. But, and here's the key, no atoms are created nor destroyed. So we change where they are and what they're combined with. But we don't make new atoms. And we don't get rid of the atoms that we started with. Okay, Big difference between making new ones or getting rid of them versus just rearranging them. Okay. Therefore, here's one of the consequences and what we're going to deal with mostly today. The total mass in grams of the reactants must be equal to the total mass of the products okay again I'll let you pause here if you need to kind of get that finished up and then I'll show you some examples of just what this looks like so let's use some familiar uh, elements and compounds to talk about a reaction and how conservation of mass looks so let's talk about the formation of water how can we form water from its parts? Well, water has the formula H2O, which means it has some hydrogen and some oxygen in it. Those two elements are found as gases normally in our atmosphere. So let's just describe this. Hydrogen and oxygen combine or react to form water. So can you hear in there, what are the reactants and what are the products? Okay. 
we just write it out in words. Hydrogen plus oxygen. And then we'll use that arrow as a representation of the reaction. And then we have a single product called water, right? So can you see the hydrogen and the oxygen are the reactants and water is the product? So let's ask this. How much water will be formed when four grams of hydrogen react with 32 grams of oxygen. One of the things I did here was I, I wanted to have a form of the equation. Now, we used words instead of symbols here, but it still works. Because it really helps when you're answering questions like this to, to have that in front of you, some form of the equation. And here's why. I'd like for you to be able to write down what you know right below or right above the equation. So, for example, it says here, we're starting with 4 grams of hydrogen. So we could write here 4 grams and 32 grams of oxygen. 32 grams. And see, this plus sign still kind of goes along with the numbers as well. So all of the hydrogen and oxygen that we have at the beginning, all of the atoms in the reactant are still present. They're just combined together to form water. And so the masses of those atoms are still going to add up to be the same. So we will end up with 36 grams of water when we're done because all that mass is still, here's the fancy word that we use, conserved. Conserved means it doesn't go anywhere, and it doesn't, like, come out of nowhere. It's all the same after as it was before. So the total before, the total after is the same. So the answer is 36 grams. Okay? Let's look at another one. Okay, we'll use another common example. Just going to use words still, not going to use formulas for this. So talk about the rusting of iron. What does that mean? This is where iron combines with oxygen to form rust. So let's write that as a word equation, like I did in the other one. Combines with means reacts with. So you hear the two reactants are the iron and the oxygen. And what do we have when we're all done with the reaction? That's rust. Okay, so iron plus oxygen react to form. See that arrow means react to form rust. All right, so a word equation is what we've represented. So how about this question? How many grams of oxygen will combine with 50 grams of iron to form 80 grams of rust. Again, we're going to involve numbers here. So there's, we're going to do the same kind of math with the numbers that you see in the equation itself. So let's write in the numbers that we know. We're going to start with 50 grams of iron. So we're going to put 50 grams here. And we have 80 grams of rust. Now don't put that here with the oxygen. The 80 grams goes here with the rust. 
I'm asking how many grams of oxygen. So that's sort of my missing piece here. Again, the idea of conservation of mass means the total mass of all the reactants and the total mass of all the products have to add up to the same number. So 50 grams plus this number has to add up to 80. What is that number? 30 grams. I just did some subtraction there, right? 80 is what I ended with. I knew that 50 grams of it was the iron, and the remaining 30 grams must have been the oxygen. Okay? All right, I'll do one more example here using one of the reactions that we did in the last lesson. Do you remember the dramatic reaction that I showed you under the camera in the first lesson where we started with two clear liquids, two solutions we call it, which were chemicals that were dissolved in water. And when I poured one into the other, I suddenly had a bright yellow um, appearance. Okay, If I had waited a little while and evaporated away the water, I would have had some sort of powdery yellow stuff left. That was the lead iodide. So let's write a word equation for what happened there. I'm going to have to squeeze a little bit because some of these names are a little long. So be mindful of that as you write. So what we started with there was lead nitrate. See, I'm going to condense it here a little bit. And it reacted with potassium iodide. And all that happened in this reaction was a little bit of a swapping of partners, if you will. So instead of the lead being with the nitrate, the lead ended up with the iodine to form lead iodide. And then the potassium was with the nitrate. Tight squeeze here. Sorry. I'm using big, thick Sharpie so it shows up well on my camera. But um, again, a little bit of spacing issue there. So here's my two reactants, and here's my two products, okay? So conservation of mass says that the total mass of all the reactants that we begin with has to add up to the total mass of the products that we end with. So let's make up this problem. How much lead nitrate will react with 120 grams of potassium iodide to form 150 grams of lead iodide and 75 grams of potassium nitrate. You can pause here and get the rest of that down. And then I'll show you how I think through this using the equation that's on the paper. Okay, so let's take the numbers that are given to us in our question, put them up here where they belong in the equation. So we have 120 grams of potassium iodide. That's here. I'm using a different color so that it kind of sticks out a little bit. We're going to form 150 grams of lead iodide. That's one of our products. And 75 grams of potassium nitrate. That's over here. Now, if we want to turn this into an equation that looks a little bit more familiar from math class, here's what we can do. The reaction sign here means this stuff turns into or reacts to turn into. But the way we apply conservation of mass, we can replace that with the equals sign. Okay, And then the combining of the products or the reactants with the pluses 
We could also kind of bring those addition signs down. And again, it's going to turn a little bit more into an equation that you know. See, here's what we're missing here. We're asking how many grams of lead nitrate we're going to need. See how we just turned this into an equation? This number plus 120 grams has to equal 150 grams plus 75 grams. All right? So, you know, there's different ways your math teachers have taught you to do this. If you have a calculator, it might be helpful here. But in math class, we would just say, some people will call this X plus 120 grams equals, and then I would combine these first. 150 grams added to 75 makes 225 grams. So it looks a little simpler here. How many grams plus 120 makes 225? That actually is one I can do in my head, but you can certainly grab a calculator or fire up Desmos or whatever. Um, it's 225 minus 120, which is 105 grams. Okay, trying to keep the numbers a little bit more manageable for you there. Okay, so 105 grams of the lead nitrate is what we would need to react. Now, I'm doing this for the, your first look at chemical um, equations and chemical reactions. Um, if you're a more advanced student watching this and you're in a chemistry class, I want you to just be forewarned that these numbers uh, can't actually work out this way. I chose simple numbers so that we can maybe do math in our head. Um, but there's a lot more to know here in a chemistry class. Like the the numbers here would not actually work out. There's there's issues of what we call limiting reactants and and things like that. So um, if you're in a chemistry class while you're watching this, be a little bit careful because again, there's there's a little bit more to this that I'm I'm simplifying um, for the purposes of my class, a physical science class where we're learning this for the first time. Okay. All right, so there's three examples. If you need to go back and watch any of these again, you're certainly welcome to. There's other examples you could find on the uh, on the web if you need to. Um, but hopefully uh, this got you the start that you needed. Okay, let you try out the worksheet that goes along with this. Good luck with that.